What's happening, guys? Keith here with your August 12th edition of the Impact Report. So if you haven't checked out my review of this past week's episode of Impact, you can do so by clicking the link at the top of the screen. And speaking of this past week's episode of Impact, it drew 168,000 viewers and ranked 127 on Cable's Top 150. This is down from last week's episode that drew 248,000 viewers. And it is actually the second lowest viewership for a first-run episode in the show's history, beating out the December 14th, 2017 episode, which drew 161,000 viewers. Um, pretty concerning that it dropped 80,000 viewers from last week's episode, that which is basically a third of the viewers last week. Um, but this is really telling that Impact does indeed have a lot of casual fans, and they will tune into something that in their mind is more important to them to watch this week, most likely being the NFL, as they are back with preseason action. Um, I'm going to speak about a few things that I talked about on Robert Does Wrestling's podcast when I joined him a few weeks ago, uh, just talking about the viewership in general and things that lead to the decline in viewers, in my opinion. Uh, the first being the illegal streams. Now, these are available generally before the show airs, sometimes even as early as Thursday morning. Um, I wish Impact was able to do something about this because I think this does indeed hurt the viewership. Uh, I mean, you can watch the show without commercial breaks, and you can watch it whenever you want. Um, another thing is the wrestling fatigue. Now, I'm sure there are a lot of people that watch WWE wrestling along with Impact Wrestling. And if you watch WWE and all their shows throughout the week, you're watching at least seven hours of wrestling. You add in a pay-per-view, and you could be up to as much as 12 or 13 hours. By the time Thursday rolls around, you probably don't want to watch more wrestling. I mean, if you watch Lucha Underground on Wednesday, that's another added hour as well. So I think that definitely plays a role in that, and people aren't viewing it on the first run and maybe catching it sometime later in the weekend, maybe on demand or one of those illegal streams because they're so accessible. And, uh, I mean, the GWN doesn't air the episodes, in the U.S. anyway, until 14 days, I believe, after the episode already airs. So, there's that. Um, also, the lack of outreach to other wrestling fans. I mean, their social media can only do so much. There's no other ways that really Impact is doing so to talk about their product on television. You don't see commercials on other networks. You don't... I don't watch Pop any other time besides when Impact is on, so I don't know if there's any plug for Impact Wrestling on Pop TV any other time of the week. But another thing, and uh, this is kind of different from the lack of viewership, is the viewership in other regions of the world. I mean, they are now a Canada-based company, so I'm wondering what the viewership is like there, over in the UK, Australia, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, if anybody from overseas would able to would be able to give me a little insight on that. That information would be greatly appreciated um, just because I'm wondering how they do otherwise overseas outside of the U.S. Jim Ross actually spoke about the viewership on his latest edition of the Ross Report. Um, he said, Just when you thought that Impact Wrestling was building some momentum, and I th think they still are, their television ratings have recently gone off the hook in a bad way. They had their lowest rating of 2018 for their weekly episodic television. There's an old saying my granny told me one time about her mercantile, her store, that you can't sell goods out of an empty wagon. I don't think the Pop TV wagon is very loaded. If you're like me, I can ask this question anybody and I'd like to get the answer. Are there any other programs that you watch on Pop TV in addition to Impact Wrestling? Didn't think so. They got to build their company around talent and television. Their talent side seems to be coming together. Their nucleus? They gotta have a nucleus and somebody's gotta get hot. It's that simple. They've gotta get on a vehicle at some point in time that's gonna give them a chance to survive and become very profitable. Um, I know there was a lot of talk about the YouTube numbers affecting their show as well, since you can just hop onto their YouTube page and basically watch the majority of things that happen throughout the show. Um, so the numbers were low this week as well for their YouTube page. Uh, number three, as far as the viewership goes on the YouTube page, was Pentagon vs. Matt Seidel highlights. That had 45,000 views. 
Number two, OGs issue a challenge to LAX for a Street Fight rematch. That did 70,000 views. And number one, Killer Cross screws Eddie Edwards out of the world title, and that did 91,000 views. So there's that. Um, we did get some news about the August tapings, which take place today and tomorrow. Some big matches scheduled for the TV tapings, um, one being Pentagon Jr. versus Sammy Callahan in a Mexican death match. And Brian Cage defends the X Division Championship against Phoenix. Two very high caliber matches. Um, I hope they build a lot of the Pentagon Jr. versus Sammy Callahan match because I think a lot of people would tune in for that. I'm wondering if they're going to do what they did with the barbed wire massacre and have people tune in to their Twitch channel for that one. But we will see when the time comes. Uh, Impact Wrestling has also announced its first two matches for MediaCon 2018. Uh, we have Sammy Callahan versus Jimmy Havoc, and LAX defends their tag team titles against Fleisch and Storm. So, two big matches already announced. We will see more coming in the upcoming weeks, and I will let you guys know when they come out. Um, Impact Wrestling has also released a statement about Bound for Glory tickets. And they said in their statement, Before the stars of Impact Wrestling get ready for one night only, Night of the Dummies, in Binghamton, New York, they will be at Peterson's Tavern in New York gearing up for Bound for Glory tickets for the biggest event of the year. Bound for Glory will be available to everyone on Saturday, August 25th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. However, if you're anywhere near the Binghamton area at on August 25th, you can be the very first to secure your place in the Melrose Ballroom for Bound for Glory in New York City. Fans in attendance will have the first chance to purchase tickets and VIP packages for Bound for Glory. It all gets started on 12 p.m. or at 12 p.m. Eastern Time at Peterson's Tavern. Uh, Bound for Glory takes place on October 14th in New York City and will air live on pay-per-view. Um, so I am a little disappointed that the tickets are going on sale on August 25th as I have a wedding to go to and I am planning on attending Bound for Glory as it is only about an hour drive from me. So hopefully I am able to get those tickets and they don't sell out too fast. Uh, we have a little update on Rosemary. She posted on Twitter, What delicious news. Phase 1 is complete, Hivelings. We've, had, we've been told that the Shadows construction of the new meat suit is now finished. Phase 2 begins now with testing and training. Must have it conditioned to be a true killing machine. We're getting closer. So good news there on the progress for Rosemary. Um, so the good folks over at DailyDDT.com have posted an interesting article titled Impact Wrestling. An alliance between Sue Young and Scarlett Bordeaux could offer viewers an important survey on the depth of women in wrestling. I'll just read a little bit from it, and I will drop that link in the comments section below so you guys can check that out. Um, she wrote, Scarlett Bordeaux's two-week tenure on Impact Wrestling may not have people using her name in the same sentence as current Knockouts champion Sue Young just yet. That said, an alliance between Scarlett and Sue could off still offer viewers a very loaded message about the history, the future, and the versatility of women's wrestling. Um, a great article. I will drop that link down below and pin it for you guys so you guys can check that out. So we had Tessa Blanchard on this week's media teleconference. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out for Wrestle to WrestleZone for providing a transcript script for this. Um, so Tessa talks about uh, running into obstacles every day, having the last name she has is both a blessing and a curse. She says Impact Wrestling has given her a great platform and she is happy to be there. She knows what her goals are, and she keeps them at the forefront of her mind. Uh, she says she wants to build upon what her grandfather and stepfather have done in the business. Impact Wrestling is her platform, and they are supplying her with the tools to do that. She's still honing her sk skills, and still she chooses to sign, or she chose to sign with Impact because she went with her gut. Uh, her family has been very supportive, but they are realists about the business. Uh, she says that Don Callis is one of her favorite people, and she says he's just a great person all around, and he's always very supportive of her backstage. Her main goal is to win the Knockouts Championship, obviously. Uh, she says she is a huge fan of intergender wrestling, and she hopes to see it someday in Impact Wrestling. I, I think that would be a big thing if Impact did indeed do that. It would 
definitely be something different from the other main wrestling shows on TV. Um, Tessa has been in a handful of intergender matches that I've seen, one being against Brian Cage. Uh, another was, I believe, Dave Chris. She wrestled him at Wrestle Circus as well. Uh, she says she doesn't think people understand how special All In is going to be, and she's very happy to be a part of it. And she closes by saying that Impact Wrestling's women's roster is the best on the planet. Everyone is competition, but she is a different breed. She sees herself as top tier, and someday the landscape of everything is going to change. So Brian Cage says that Impact vs. Ring of Honor thing is going down, but no one has challenged him. He has sent out an open challenge to any member of the Bullet Club to face him on the Jericho Cruise. So that should be pretty big. Um, a lot of fans speculating that he will face Adam Page, but we will see, and I will let you guys know once we get some concrete answers on who he will face. Uh, so last thing, I have a question for everybody out there listening so with the Chris Jericho rumors floating around about him coming to Impact Wrestling, out of these four guys, who do you want to see Jericho have a feud with the most? One, Sammy Callahan. Two, Eli Drake. Three, Joe Hendry. Or four, Austin Aries. So let me know what you guys would like to see from Chris Jericho and one of these four men down in the comments section below. Um, and that is all I have for you guys this week. Thanks for taking out the time of your day to check out my video and i will see you guys back on friday for another impact review and until then thanks for checking out my video and don't forget to like share and subscribe thanks guys bye